Hey everybody. In the constellation Serpens, there exists a very cool object. It was described in the early 1950s by Arthur Hogue as somewhat resembling a planetary nebula, but it wasn't. We later found out that it was in fact a ring galaxy. Now a ring galaxy is uh, a lesser known type of galaxy where uh, there is a galactic core and the material of the galaxy forms an actual ring with a clearly defined separation between the core and the outer ring. Hence the name Ring Galaxy. Now this particular galaxy, known as Hoag's Object, is probably the finest example of a ring galaxy. Now I came across this while looking through the January 2024 issue of Astronomy Magazine, which listed the 101 weirdest cosmic objects. I was immediately captivated and I wanted to image this ring galaxy. However, even though this ring galaxy is over 120,000 light years across, it lies 600 million light years away, making it extremely small and extremely dim, especially from my border weight location. As a matter of fact, this ring galaxy is only magnitude 16 and it appears as half the size of the ring nebula making it absolutely tiny after many many hours of imaging and stacking i was able to discern the shape of this ring nebula and i put out a challenge to all of you to see if you could catch this as well especially if you had a larger telescope with better skies now many of you responded that you're going to take up this challenge but in the end after many months only two of you were able to capture and send me images of Hoag's object. So in this video, I want to go over what you were able to capture and to talk about another astrophotography challenge. Hi, my name is Chris and welcome to my channel. All right, let's go through these uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, first submission comes from Andrew. Uh, Andrew had a couple of different versions of his image. I think this is the one that he preferred. And uh, he got this great shot of this uh, really nice separation between the ring. So this is the, the outer ring, which uh, I suppose in, in a spiral galaxy such as ours, this would be the material that would be out in the arms and there's this this really clear separation between that outer ring and then the the core right here on the inside now uh this image let me just pull up the details here so uh this image was taken from Bortle seven skies and total integration time is 14 hours so that is that is a lot of imaging Andrew uh, took 1,100 exposures, so right about 1,100 exposures, ranging uh, between 30 seconds and one minute in exposure time each. So there's a lot of stacking that, that was involved in putting together this, uh, this image here. And it, it really shows. I mean, that is, that is a lot of detail right here that uh, I certainly did not get in, in my version. So well done, Andrew. Uh, Andrew used, let me bring up his uh, telescope here, so Andrew used his CPC-800. Uh, this is an 8-inch telescope. Uh, it, is, uh, it is not using a reducer, so this is at 2,032 millimeters of focal length. Uh, on a CPC Celestron Altezi mount, which is uh, uh, running on a equatorial wedge. So uh, similar to my setup, it's an uh, Altezi mount on a wedge. Uh, he's using a Nikon D5300 camera that is a 24.2 megapixel DSLR. Uh, he's also guiding with PHD2 with a separate uh, guide scope and guide camera here. The entire setup is run with a mini PC, which is a, a pretty cool setup here. 
Um, let's have a look at a couple of uh, the other images that Andrew sent in. So uh, this was the first one. It's kind of his combination of everything. And then going through a couple of different variations, this one here is a little bit brighter. You can see a bit more of the distinction in the ring. And uh, this one here is a little bit more cropped in, a little bit of a noisier image. So um, what he had done is he had used Cyril uh, to do his stacking and his uh, flats and dark calibration and biases, uh, and uh, as well as uh, photometric color calibration. And then he denoised using Graxpert, and then he went back into Cyril to do some uh, additional histogram transformation and a generalized hyperbolic stretch, so as GHS. So these other images were, were different variations um, of those attempts. Now what he had also done is he had tried to apply the Starnet++ star removal, uh, but that resulted in some additional artifacts that he wasn't all that pleased with. And then he had also tried to do a 2x drizzle. So drizzling meaning he had tried to expand out the image to uh, extrapolate some detail, uh, but uh, through the dimness of this object, how small it was, uh, in the end he said that didn't really help much. So uh, going back to his first image here, which I, uh, I agree was, uh, I think that one is, uh, is the, the, the nicest one of the set. Uh, very well done, Andrew. Thank you so much for sharing this. I, I think that's a tremendous job and uh, a very cool outcome. So going on to the uh, second set of images. So, oops, let's go back in here. So this one here comes from David. Uh, David uh, submitted this image first. So this uh, was as a result of six hours of integration. Uh, and he had some help from his son, Matthew. Uh, so that was that was their image. Uh, and I think David did a lot of the image capture and he had some help from his son uh, in terms of some of the, the input on the processing. And uh, this one here also very clearly, you can see the, the ring itself and the core of the galaxy. So really nice separation there, lots of detail. You can see the two little galaxies here off to the side. Those are very clearly defined. Uh, a lot of contrast in this image, but the contrast really brought out some of the, the ring. Now, uh, David came back a little while later when he had a chance to add a bit more data. Let me exit out of this. And uh, he submitted the second image. So this is now uh, his final image with 10 hours worth of integration time. Now this one isn't stretched quite as far. The contrast rather is is not as extreme. But this is a, a very nice image. It's a little bit more subtle, but the the ring is here. You can see the uh, variation between the, the ring and this dark space between the ring and the core of the galaxy that's clearly defined. You've still got those two little galaxies here. Uh, a, a really wonderful capture, David. Well done. Really like this one as well. And for this image, uh, David was using his... Um, this is a 9.25 inch telescope. So this is a C9.25 Celestron. Uh, and it is running on a Celestron CGX mount. And now just the details of the image. So uh, Bortle 7 skies, just outside of Houston in Texas. 10 hours integration time. Now for his image, uh, David was using his uh, schmidt cassegrain Green telescope with a 0.7 reducer. Uh, and a Optolong L Pro filter. So that's the uh, multi band pass um, light pollution filter from Optolong. Uh, his camera is the Poseidon C, which is the 26 megapixel IMX571 APS C sensor. Happens to be the same one that uh, I have in the ASI 2600 MC Pro camera that I got earlier this summer. Now for processing, David and Matthew used Deep Sky Stacker along with Cyril and uh, Grexpert, and they also did some post processing in Adobe Lightroom. So, a very cool image here with uh, a really nice setup. 
uh, David, Matthew, thank you guys for sharing this as well. This was a, a really great result and uh, a lot of effort on, on both of your parts as well. So let me go back in and reshow my image. Uh, I did a slight adjustment to uh, the stretch of that image after seeing Andrew and David's. So this is slightly brighter than the version that I showed before. Now this was imaged with uh, the Celestron Nexstar 6SE on a wedge and an ASI 294 MC Pro camera. Uh, with the 6 inch aperture uh, and at a focal length of 945 millimeters, so that would have been half the focal length that Andrew was using, I just didn't get the level of uh, resolution uh, as either of Andrew or David. Uh, so you can still see the ring here, you can make out the separation, it's not as clear, you can definitely make out the core of the galaxy, uh, but it's also a bit of a, a wider image which gives you a bit more of the context. So uh, there you go, three different views of Hoag's object with three different setups, three different focal lengths, uh, three different sized apertures. So to everyone who got out there, thanks for trying and I hope you had fun with the attempt. And given how much fun this challenge was, what I'd like to do is set another challenge. So uh, about a year ago, I imaged another object uh, called NGC 1555. NGC 1555 also appears in Astronomy Magazine's 101 Weirdest Cosmic Objects. This is Heinz Variable Nebula. So Heinz Variable Nebula uh, is a reflection nebula that appears around a variable star. So this right here is a variable star. And as the star fluctuates in intensity, the reflection in the surrounding nebula changes in intensity. Now what I think is really cool about this nebula is that the image that you take of it is going to be unique. Because of the fluctuation of the star, no one else is going to get exactly the same image as you. Now I took this image last year from a Bortle 5 sky, and I didn't do a very good job with my flats. So I want to take another attempt to see what I can get, and I want to see if the nebula has changed at all from last year when I imaged it. So if you're willing to try, get out there and see if you can take an image of Heinz Variable Nebula. Send those in to me before December, and I'll do another video showcasing what this nebula can look like with different types of setups in different conditions of skies. So that's it for now. The challenge has been set, and until next time, thanks for watching, and clear skies.